So we're gonna go ahead and inspect and, and look at uh, this uh, 12 strand HMPE rope here. First thing we're gonna look at is all hardware um, that might be on the sling, and that's hooks, uh, thimbles, any buttons that might be keeping it on the winch, something of that nature. We're looking for any cracks, gouges, uh, anything that's gonna cause this to be taken out of uh, service. Because if that needs to be out of service, then the whole sling needs to be out of service. Next thing is the chafe gear or cut protection on the sling. Um, we're checking for any rips or holes in the chafe gear, any extreme abrasion. Because if there's a problem with the chafe gear, then there might be a problem with the rope underneath. Next thing we're going to look for is the tag, the all-important tag and, uh, and the markings. Uh, just with any rigging, any sling, any shackle, anything, there must be complete legible identification and markings. And it's going to have pretty much the same stuff that your standard wire rope or chain sling tie is going to have. It's going to show the diameter of the rope, the length of the rope, uh, serial number, the vertical choker and basket hitch ratings. So all that standard stuff and it needs to be fully legible just with any other type of rigging or sling. There is going to be a gain in diameter and it's going to slowly get down. So if we have a one inch sling, it's going to be about an inch and a half at the base of the eye and it's going to come down to a one inch sling. So that's something that you need to need to know so that it doesn't throw alarms to you. But if you've got a change in the construction or the diameter, or you will see twist in the rope. So it'll be actual twist in the rope. Um, it'll be pretty clear to see. Probably have a distortion of the rope. Next thing is the external abrasion. Extreme fuzziness is one clear way to know that you have external abrasion. Pulled out strands is another way to tell that you have extreme exterior abrasion. But if you, that strand could be worked back into the rope, just kind of massaging it and working back into the rope to where you never even know it popped out, you're fine. Another thing is cut strands in a single area. You're looking for cuts and localized budging. Next thing is internal abrasion. Basically, when you're going to inspect the rope for internal abrasion, you're just going to open the rope up as much as you possibly can and just kind of get in there and you're looking for um, broken yarns, you're looking for fused yarns, um, almost like they're melted together. You're checking for actual dirt and rocks actually being in there and anything that could cause, uh, could cause an issue. Another sign uh, that there is internal abrasion, is there will be almost a powdery uh, substance inside there from where it's actually just kind of pulverizing the yarns. Next thing is cuts. And the big question I always get is how much of a cut's too much of a cut. Inside a strand, you have many yarns, and it's kind of like a wire rope with strands and wires, um, except with wire rope, you know you have 19 wires, 36 wires, whatever it may be inside an individual strand. With yarns, there's just a whole bunch of them. There is no way to count, but um, if 50% of a strand, this is one strand, 50% of that strand is cut or more, then that's when it is removal criteria. If you have 25% of that strand cut, you can still still go with it. The last one, heat damage. Signs of heat damage, uh, of course, are melting and fused strands, which result in a big reduction in diameter, which we were talking about with an internal abrasion. This was actually broken in our test bed in the controlled break. And you can see that one, one side 
uh, gave out, well, the other side pretty much stayed intact. So everything's still good here. And as we go down, we can see at, at this point, we have a popped up strand. Um, so uh, that's, that's obviously removal for criteria. Um, distortion, uh, which we talked about first, distortion in the construction of the rope. You can see as you're going down through here that there are many different diameters. Uh, we got the big, big here where there's the splice. We talked about that being one and a half times the diameter of the rope to begin with. But you come down here, you can see it starts to get really small right here where there's a cut strand. Uh, it gets a little bit bigger, gets small again. And then as you get up here, it really starts to uh, really starts to distort badly because from the base of the eye, that's where it should be the biggest. Um, but you can see it actually gets small here and everything kind of bunched down um, right here. So we definitely had an overloading situation with the uh, distortion of the construction of the rope. Uh, and then here in this marked area, uh, we marked it with black tape just so we can clearly see um, what we're looking at here. Um, this is uh, an example of a half cut strand. So we said a strand is out, uh, out of service or a sling is out of service once a strand is cut 50% more or more. If all this was still intact and we just had this one little piece of strand here out, that wouldn't be 50% and we could still roll with this sling. So that's an example um, of a cut. And then we keep going down. We have an example of a full cut. This is uh, one strand completely severed in half. And uh, so this one is definitely completely out of service. And then if you get and look in the eye where the actual break happened, you begin to see um, just uh, examples of yarns and strands being completely severed. Um, you can see examples of, of what the fuzziness might look like in some of these applications and where the overload happened. 